In today's video, we're diving deep into one of the most enigmatic and impactful characters in the One Piece universe, Joy Boy. His legacy, shrouded in mystery and legend, has been at the core of the story, influencing events across centuries. But there's one question that has left fans puzzled how did Joy Boy meet his end? As we explore the clues and revelations from the Egghead Island arc and beyond, we'll unravel the intricate web of betrayal, power, and purpose that led to the death of this legendary figure. Stick around as we uncover the hidden truths behind Joy Boy's final moments and what they mean for the future of the One Piece world. Joy Boy is a character that has recently become essential to One Piece's storyline. His strength is incredible, yet his part in One Piece has been vital. Oda has yet to reveal the majority of Joy Boy's part in the tale, despite the fact that his relevance is vital. Joy Boy fought the Twenty Kings a long time ago, and his actions have had consequences that last forever. Joy Boy's legacy will remain at the center of One Piece for a very long time. Everything about him will be disclosed later, but there is one question that fans would like answered as quickly as possible. This inquiry focuses on his eventual death. It is reported that Joy Boy perished around the end of the Void Century, but how did he die? Joy Boy's death and the end of the Great War in One Piece Joy Boy died 800 years ago. The Egghead Island arc of One Piece provided fans with a lot of insight into Joy Boy's life. Of course, many aspects of his story remain unknown. In fact, it is reasonable to assume that the majority of Joy Boy's details are still unknown, and fans have just learned the basics. However, even this limited amount has sparked several discussions among followers, particularly about his life and death. According to Vegapunk, Joy Boy was born in a prosperous kingdom some 900 years ago. This prosperous kingdom is the same one that Clover mentioned long ago, and it has mysteriously vanished from the face of the world completely. Joy Boy was born there, and it is reported that he eventually gained the powers of the Nika fruit. This is the same fruit Luffy ate at the start of the story. Joy Boy consumed this fruit at an unknown time and in unknown conditions. However, fans are aware that he, like Luffy, possesses the ability to expand and shrink. He eventually awakened this devil fruit, which fans recognize from his silhouettes. Joy Boy eventually became a liberation warrior, similar to the sun god Nika. He faced the 20 kings, who had opposing philosophies and desired the exact opposite of Joy Boy's. Eventually, a big conflict broke out, causing widespread destruction. Joy Boy and his companions waged this fight against 20 kings who had banded together since the ancient kingdom was just too powerful for them to face on their own. The alliance eventually succeeded, and the ancient kingdom was effectively annihilated. During this 100-year war, water levels rose by 200 meters, resulting in the ancient kingdom being completely drowned. Fans are aware, however, that Joy Boy died at the end of this fight. This was confirmed by Vegapunk in his message, and his death signaled the quick end of the battle, implying that Joy Boy was the most important character in the war. With his death, the war ended, and the alliance of the Twenty Kings evolved into what is now known as the World Government. They took their place atop Marahoa, and the world's order evolved dramatically in the following years. How did Joy Boy die? Joy Boy likely died on his own terms even even if he lost. It is apparent that Joy Boy died at the end of the Void Century War. However, it remains unclear how he died in the first place. Before drawing any conclusions regarding Joy Boy's demise, fans should consider a variety of factors. The first thing fans should know is that Great Kingdom was fully aware that it was losing the war. This is because they began creating their stories on Poneglyphs in the hopes that they would be passed down from generation to generation. Second, there was most likely a traitor in their ranks, which ultimately contributed to Joy Boy's downfall. This is because the ancient weapons were created by the people of the ancient kingdom, but they somehow made their way into the hands of the Alliance. Many facts have been used to support this and the account on multiple occasions. For instance, fans are aware that the ancient weapons are intended to be utilized in a precise manner that does not result in widespread destruction. Second, fans are aware that Uranus is currently in the hands of the world government. These data demonstrate that these weapons somehow made their way into the hands of the Alliance, who subsequently utilized them to destroy the entire world, or more precisely the Great Kingdom. Joy Boy's death in one piece was probably complicated. A great kingdom could not have fallen owing to a modest arrangement. 
While it is true that numerous wars were fought throughout the void century, and many towns were destroyed despite their resilience, such as Shandora, which was one of the last cities to fall, it should be noted that Joy Boy was most likely betrayed by many. At the same time, fans understand that the ancient weapons fell into the wrong hands. Joy Boy, as strong as he is, is unlikely to be able to defeat an old weapon. Even if he had two ancient weapons, deterrence would be insufficient to dissuade the world government, which is genocidal by definition. Joy Boy's allies were most likely deliberately eliminated as a result of this power exchange, leaving him helpless. At this moment, Joy Boy most likely thought that it would be best to leave this responsibility to future generations. Surprisingly, Joy Boy knew exactly when he would return and when the Great War would explode again. He also knew when the ancient weapons would be reincarnated into the world, implying that Joy Boy may have done all of this on purpose. Joy Boy's death may not have been the accident his fans believed it was. Clearly, the idea of dying followed by Luffy completing a mission that he was unable to complete appears to be partially intentional. This may be perplexing to some fans, but they should remember that Joy Boy plainly knew when the next Nika would appear, when the Mermaid Princess would be reborn, and when the Great War would break out. This is confirmed in the story by several characters, including Toki, as well as Odin and Roger, who discovered Joy Boy's last message on the final island and reached the same conclusion. This is also how they knew they weren't the ones to alter the world, and they needed to wait a little longer. Furthermore, the fact that Joy Boy left behind everything he had on the final island, as well as the entire story of his journey there, appears to imply that he died on his own terms, freest of all. And possibly even on the final island, implying that his death had nothing to do with the war against the world government. After finishing his story, he must have waited patiently for the next Joy Boy to come find him and discover his tale. Given that he is a noble character, and the people of the D always die happy, fans understand that Joy Boy's death could not have been embarrassing or similar to a death on the battlefield. Instead, he sought independence, died on his own terms, and planned everything, waiting for the next Joy Boy to complete what he began. Summary and Highlights Joy Boy is extremely important in One Piece, as his actions have impacted the story's events throughout generations. The unexplained circumstances surrounding Joy Boy's death suggest treason as well as a larger plot for the world's future. Joy Boy's powers and legacy will continue to have an impact on the One Piece world, as fans eagerly await further discoveries. And there you have it, the fascinating and tragic tale of Joy Boy's death a story that continues to echo through the ages. His impact on the world of One Piece is undeniable, and as we await more revelations, one thing is clear, Joy Boy's legacy is far from over. Whether it was a planned exit or a consequence of betrayal, his actions set the stage for the great war that is yet to come. If you enjoyed this deep dive into Joy Boy's history, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you won't miss our future explorations into the mysteries of One Piece. Until next time, keep the adventure alive! Thank you very much for visiting the Mutual War Review YouTube channel, buddy. We hope you enjoy our review analysis. Don't forget to subscribe to continue joining us on our joyful journey in the world of anime. If you have any wishes, questions, or suggestions for our next videos, feel free to express your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you very much for your support, and until we meet again. See you next time, buddy. What is One Piece Anime? One Piece is a manga and anime story about a young boy named Monkey D. Luffy who wants to be the king of the pirates in the world. As a child, he eats a devil fruit, a strange plant that makes him able to stretch like rubber. Before the show starts, Luffy goes out into the world for the first time and starts to gather a group of pirates. The main group grows over time, but it starts with Luffy, Nami the Navigator, and a swordsman named Rorino Azoro. At some point, Luffy and his friends are known as the Straw Hat Pirates, and they go on many exciting adventures across the ocean. One Piece is a lot of fun because it's silly. Luffy goes from island to island around the world in the series. Each island has its own setting and theme. It's a pretty fantastical world full of animals that look like people, live skeletons, and other delightfully strange things. Within moments the group is in a winter scene, and the next they are on a tropical island full of giants. The show is full of silly and bright details. For example, Zoro holds a sword in his mouth, a scary military boss wears a cute bulldog hat. And people don't use phones to talk to each other instead, 
They use special transponder snails that can send and receive messages. Luffy is a carefree person who just wants to eat a tasty meal and laugh at bad jokes. Even though there are some funny parts in the series, a lot of One Piece is about freedom. During his travels, Luffy often takes up guns to help his friends and encourages others to do the same against pirates and government-backed military occupations. The characters in Luffy and his crew get stronger with each fight, which is typical for shonen manga. A lot of the story is about how Luffy beats a problem that seemed impossible to solve and finds some kind of secret power. After each fight, Luffy and his team get stronger and move closer to his main goal, which is to find the One Piece. Why is it called One Piece? The first part of both the manga and the anime shows that Pirate King Gold D. Roger is telling the truth about the mythical wealth called the One Piece. One Piece is the name of the show because Luffy wants to find the One Piece and become the next Pirate King. One of Luffy's main goals in the show is mentioned in the show's title. What is the One Piece? The answer to this question is still one of the biggest secrets in the series. It's been more than 1,000 episodes, and we still don't know what One Piece is. We know that the One Piece is the name of the treasure that Gold D. Roger collected on his travels because of details in the manga. We still don't know a lot about the treasure, though. There are a lot of ideas from fans about what the One Piece is, but we still don't know what it is or even if it's real. The One Piece could just be the friends Luffy makes along the way.